Hello world, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to be talking about custom attributes and aspect-oriented programming. We're going to look at how you can create your own custom attributes in .NET. We're going to define what attributes are in case you haven't come across them before. And then we're going to take it a step further and look at how we can use aspect-oriented programming to intercept the code that we're running without changing the original code. And that allows us to do lots of additional things to a code base without making radical changes. But before we get into all that, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me give you lots of great .NET and software engineering content. So let's start off by introducing us to attributes or more specifically, custom attributes. Now, attributes in C-sharp are some of the things that you've probably seen above methods or classes. And we tend to use the phrase decorate when we refer to attributes because we decorate our classes or our methods with these items that are inside uh, square brackets. If I was in an ASP.NET application and I had a method that I wanted to uh, flag as requiring authorization before somebody could use the method, I could use an authorized attribute. I can't use it in this because it's a console application. It's not using that uh, namespace, but it's the same idea. It is metadata. It's a way of decorating your code with pieces of metadata so that during its execution, it can be described in a certain way. So there are a lot of different attributes that come with .NET. Things like authorize, you may have seen uh, serializable when you're dealing with data structures like JSON or, or XML. You can tag or decorate your code with a serializable attribute to say whether or not that piece of code should be serialized when the serializer runs. That's a general refresher on attributes in general. But what if you want to create your own custom attributes? Well, it's really quite straightforward. In fact, it's quite similar to creating your own custom exceptions. We do this using inheritance. So if I want to create my own attribute, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to create a new attribute called track usage. Uh, and that will become clear as to why I'm going to do that later on in the video. So what we do is we, I'm just going to zoom this in. We create a class and then you call the class the name of your attribute. So I'm going to call this track usage. And then after we've defined the class name, we can then inherit that with a colon and say attribute. And there we go. We've got an attribute. It really is as simple as that. We can just simply specify a class that inherits from attributes as the base class. And then straight away, if we look at our main method in our console app, we put a square bracket, I start typing track usage, and there we go. It's a legitimate attribute. So that's great. It's nice and easy and quick to do. There are a few other things to think about as well. Like in a lot of attributes, you might need to pass parameters through to them. So what you can do here is you can define a constructor. So I can say public track usage and then ask for a message. And then you can just say, okay, I've got a private um, string message. Don't need to get actually, just leave it as it is. And then I can just say that message is equal to message. Okay, so we're passing through that data when we're uh, creating the attribute. And so you notice up here the track usage attribute now has a red squiggly line under it because it's expecting us to pass through a parameter. So if I then do uh, some parentheses, we'll get the IntelliSense to say um, we need to pass in a message. So when it comes to just applying metadata to some code, this is all well and good. Um, but really, for me, attributes are also a really handy way of initiating a concept called aspect-oriented programming. Now, aspect-oriented programming is uh, something that isn't typical of most projects. It's probably something that I think is a bit of an outlier. It's not commonly talked about, but the idea is that you're able to influence or impact a code base without directly changing the original code. And this can be really powerful if you're working with quite a fragile code base or if you want things to happen around your code as the code executes. Now, as you can imagine, to do this from scratch would be a pretty tall order. We want to be 
intercepting code as it runs, and that's going to be a massive project, right? Well, obviously, we're not going to do that. We're going to use a library for this, and the library that I'm using is called PostSharp. PostSharp is a library available on NuGet. It does have paid versions, but we're going to use the free version. It's quite suitable for our use case, uh, and it uses um, a lot of what we would call meta programming. Programming which is referring back to code. So if you think of uh, reflection in .NET, that's often referring to uh, the code that we've written. We're getting types, we're trying to target other pieces of code based on their name. This is quite similar, uh, but we're going to use this to intercept some code as it runs, but we're going to be using some attributes for this. So we're essentially going to make it so that we define an attribute that once we decorate our code with that attribute, our interception logic that we build using PostSharp will kick in. So I've already got PostSharp installed, but I'll just show you the package. If you head over to, actually, let's not go to the console. Let's go to manage NuGet packages for this solution. Uh, and I'll look at my installed. I've got quite a few things on this demo console, but you'll notice I've got PostSharp. Uh, and I've just gone for the latest stable release. When you install PostSharp for the first time, it will actually pop up with uh, a modal asking you uh, to apply a license. You don't need to do that if you want to use the free version. You can just carry on through um, and it will then allow you to use the library. Okay, so our use case is that we want to define an attribute which tracks our usage. The idea is that for the use case, we're hitting a code block and we want to tell somebody when that code block has been executed. This could be useful if we're monitoring customer usage, for example. You might have a Blazor application that when somebody clicks a button, it calls out to a service. Uh, and if you decorate the method in that service that's hit with your track usage attribute, then it just automatically in the background fires off some notification. Now we're not going to actually write the notification code we're going to write the code that intercepts so that you can actually then write your notification code. We'll just log something out to the console to say that we've intercepted the code. So it all starts with this attribute. Now we've already created one, but if I change the base class so that we inherit from a post shark class instead, and that post shark class is method interception aspect. So interception aspect, this no longer is needed. We don't need to pass through a parameter anymore. I'm going to keep the constructor and then we can add our logic to the attribute so we can actually intercept the code if it's decorating via our custom attribute. So to do this, PostSharp has a method called onInvoke and we can override that ourselves in our attribute. So I'm going to say public override and then onInvoke and you can see in the IntelliSense we've got some um, guidance as to what we need to add. So I'm going to just use onInvoke and that's expecting uh, an argument of type method interception args. So I'll accept that. And it automatically puts in base on invoke. I don't think I need that. I'm just going to comment that out for now. But what I essentially want to do here is add the logic that I want to fire when our code hits. So I'm just going to pretend that I've got a method which sends a notification. So public void notify code hit. And then I'm just going to put a console.write line. Code hit. So in the oninvoke um, method that we've overridden, we can then call this notify code hit. And the idea is that if we then decorate some code with this attribute, then we'll hit that method and it will execute the logic we've specified. So we're going to take the track usage attribute off there. I'm going to create a new method in main. I'm going to just kind of call it do a thing. Okay, so this is just going to do another console.write line and it's did a thing. That's what's going to output to the console. Then, if we decorate this with our custom attribute track usage, then we should expect that when do a thing is called, that notify code hit will also be called in the background. And we wouldn't have had to have actually changed any of this code except for adding an attribute, which is a lot less invasive than actually going in and changing the code. So in main, I'll put do a thing. I'll put a breakpoint on not notify code hit, and then I'll run the application. So I got an error message because I forgot to do something, uh, and that is another attribute that's needed 
on the actual attribute we've created. Uh, so this is a post sharp thing you need to do. It says P serializable. If you've got that on there, you can see I've got a message there. Demo console dot program dot track usage must be annotated with P serializable. So nice and easy fix. And then I'll run the application again. Okay, so the application is running. Nothing has been written out to the console yet. So the do a thing um, outcome of writing a line that says did a thing hasn't happened yet. So that tells us that we're intercepting the code before it does anything. So we've hit the do a thing method and then our interceptor has come in and it's doing its job first. So then if we did a step through of that, we'll see that code hit actually uh, writes to the console followed by nothing. There's something else we need to do because when we intercept the code, we actually have to tell PostSharp to allow the code to continue. So what we can do is we can take these args that we've passed into on invoke and we can call a method on it called proceed. And that will allow us to continue with the flow of our application. So if I run this again, we get code hit and did a thing. So we can see that we intercept uh, and the code is basically frozen before we do anything. And if we say args.proceed, it will carry on. So this could be incredibly useful because the idea is that if you need to just jump in as a piece of code runs and do something and then allow it to carry on without changing the original code, this can be a fantastic way of doing it. And it's a very basic sort of uh, foray into aspect-oriented programming. So I hope you found this really useful. If you want to see more about aspect-oriented programming, then please let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you soon for some more great .NET content.